everybody and welcome back to To Be Like Christ. We are going to talk about Matthew chapter 7 in five minutes. If you want the handout that you're about to see on the screen, you can go to our website. There's a link down below and there's this handout and a lot of other resources that are great for Bible study. Let's talk about Matthew chapter 7. When do the events of this chapter take place? Well, this is during Jesus's ministry. Jesus was born about 4 BC, roughly. And so this takes place somewhere between the years of 26 and 31 AD. Now, the main characters of this chapter, there's not very many, because as we mentioned in the last two videos, this chapter records a sermon of Jesus's. And so really the only main characters here are Jesus is doing the preaching, and then Jesus's disciples or his followers. The actual biblical text doesn't tell us where the events of chapter 5, 6, and 7 take place or where the sermon was preached. There is a tradition, though, that this took place on what has become known as the Mount of the Beatitudes, which is on the northwest side of the Sea of Galilee, and you can see it on the map there on your screen. Now we can go over an outline of the chapter. As we mentioned, chapters 5, 6, and 7, this is all a record of the sermon that Jesus preaches on the mountain. Now in chapter 7, the first thing that Jesus tackles is judging other people. This is verses 1 through 6. Jesus warned his disciples about judging other people for their mistakes while ignoring their own. He advised them not to be hypocritical in their condemnation of others. He said, quote, First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. The second section, verses 7 through 11, I've just entitled it, God Gives to Those Who Ask. Jesus here is talking about God giving blessings to those who ask him and pray for them. Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. And then he talks about how if earthly fathers, our earthly fathers, know how to give us what we need and give good gifts to us, how much more is God capable of giving good gifts and the necessities of life to those who he has created? Verse 12 is kind of its own standalone section. It's the golden rule, and maybe you've heard this before. Very important teaching. Do to others as you want them to do to you. And then in another famous section, verses 13 through 14, Jesus talks about the wide and the narrow gate. There's a road and a gate that leads to eternal destruction, and it's wide, and it's very easy to walk down, and there's a lot of people heading in that direction. And there's another gate. It's narrow, and the way to get there is hard, but that gate leads to eternal life. Jesus is covering a lot of topics here at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, so the sections are very short, as you may have noticed. In verses 21 through 23, Jesus says that not everyone who says to him, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's more, it takes more than just a, a verbal profession or saying, oh yeah, I'm a disciple of Jesus, right? Our lives need to reflect it. The second to last section, verses 24 through 27, Jesus talks about homes that are built on the rocks and homes that are built on the sand. A person who heard Jesus' words and made application of them was like a man who built his house on the solid foundation of a rock. A person who heard Jesus' words but didn't make any application of them, he was like a man who built his house on the sand. When the floods and the storms come, the man whose house is built on the rock He's going to be okay, but the man whose house is built on the sand, all of it's going to be washed away. That's the end of the Sermon on the Mount. We've got two more verses in this chapter, verse 28 and 29, and it's the people's response to hearing Jesus' sermon. The people are amazed when Jesus, is fin Jesus finished because he had a, a mastery and an ability to teach that was unlike their scribes who were supposed to be the experts in God's law and God's will. So in the big picture, where does... Chapters 5, 6, and 7 in this sermon fit into the big Bible story. Well, this tells us a lot about Jesus. This is one of the longest teaching sections that we have recorded in the scriptures. And if you go back and read it, you'll see that most of the principles that are presented here, they're not super complex. They're pretty straightforward and simple. And Jesus's illustrations are also simple. Jesus's goal wasn't to show off his vocabulary or to have people admire him for being very eloquent. And that stands in contrast with a lot of modern day preachers. Jesus, God, came down to earth to teach with clarity and simplicity so that everyone, absolutely everyone, could understand God and what God wanted from their lives. Now for one application from this, there's so many that we could look at, but just one to think about. Jesus had a remarkable way of saying a lot with just a few words. A great example of that is the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. 
it's not difficult to understand. It's a very short statement, but if it was actually applied properly, so many of the world's biggest problems would vanish overnight. Take some time right now to dwell on what the world would look like if everybody applied this principle. And then do your best today to make application of it, to make the world a little bit better place.